Hey folks, welcome to the Ultimate Guide to Shutter Speed, the most thorough, most comprehensive, most helpful resource in the entire world on shutter speed. Hi, I'm David Molnar, your photography mentor. So just so you know, this 10 part free video series is just part of the Ultimate Guide to Shutter Speed. The Ultimate Guide to Shutter Speed is on davidmolnar.com forward slash shutter dash speed. We've compiled everything from all the videos to all the cheat sheets to all the um, graphics and illustrations and everything to help you um, along your journey to learn to master shutter speed. So if you're watching this video anywhere else, head on over to davidmolnar.com forward slash shutter dash speed so that you can get all of this learning in one place and make it the easiest way possible for you to master shutter speed. All right, so you might be wondering why does shutter speed matter? Why do I need different variations of length of shutter speed? Well, simply put, one of the main things that shutter speed controls is motion. And when I say that, I mean whether or not your image is freezing the motion or whether it's actually conveying and allowing you to show movement in your images. And you can have lots and lots of creative control simply by changing your shutter speed. Let me show you some examples of some rock star students of mine who have both frozen motion and allowed motion in their photographs. This first photograph is by one of my students named Robin Hill Mayer. And this image is um, very, a very, very fast shutter speed. So you see this hummingbird, a gorgeous shot by Robin. And the hummingbird's motion is frozen. You can barely see the slightest indication of the hummingbird's wings fluttering, but for all practical purposes, the motion is frozen, frozen because we all know the hummingbirds move very, very fast. So this is an example of a fast shutter speed. Okay, in this image from another one of my rock star students, Jennifer Anderson, you see this gorgeous waterfall shot where the water is flowing. Now this is a very slow or long shutter speed that allows that motion to be conveyed in the image. So you see motion blur. Now these two images that you just saw are extremely different examples of how shutter speed works and how you can use shutter speed to creatively control how your image looks and the motion that's either frozen or allowed and conveyed in your image to be captured. So how does shutter speed work inside of a camera anyway? Well, let me show you. First of all, when you hear that click, that is actually the shutter going up and down in combination with the mirror. So let me explain the way that mirrors actually work. Take this lens off for a second. There is a mirror inside of your camera, all right? And what that's doing is it's actually bouncing light up to another mirror that bounces it out the viewfinder. Let me show you. So this is the viewfinder right here. And remember, you see that, that mirror that's inside the camera right there. It's at an angle, all right? So from the side view, there is this mirror right here. It is angled. It, light is coming in through the lens. It's hitting that mirror, and it's bouncing up to hit another mirror that's actually angled like this. And that is bouncing it back out through the viewfinder. So that's what you're actually seeing when you're looking through the viewfinder, when you're taking pictures. Okay, what happens when you take a picture is that mirror comes up, okay? But that is not the shutter. The shutter is actually a curtain, a two-part curtain that is right behind the mirror. So let me show you real quick what happens, all right? When you press that button, the mirror comes up. What you probably didn't see there is that there is actually two different parts of a curtain, right? And it comes down, and then all of a sudden you can see a green thing. Let me actually take a longer picture here. I'm gonna do a longer shutter speed here. Now you're seeing that green curtain, or sorry, that green sensor in the background. That is your digital image sensor. That is what is actually capturing the light. Back in the day, that would have been the film, okay? If you had bought film and put it inside of your camera, that is the same thing as a digital image sensor. It's just the digital version, okay? So what's happening is the mirror is coming up. Right behind that is a curtain, okay? And part of the curtain drops down. Uh, pretend my face is the digital image sensor. Part of that curtain drops down, and then for the duration of time that you have set the shutter speed, whether it's a long time or a slow time, 
the curtains will split and it will allow the light to come in and hit my face or the sensor, okay? And then when the allotted time is done, a second part of that curtain will slide down right in front of my face or the digital image sensor and it will stop recording the light inside of your camera, okay? All right, so let me show you a slow motion clip of what just happened. So you're seeing the mirror pop up, you saw the shutter for a millisecond, and then you saw that flash of green come up, and that was the digital image sensor, and then the second half of the curtain comes down and the mirror comes back down again, ending the entire image um, capturing process. So let's go ahead and break that down and kind of pause it at these key moments. So the first thing you see is the mirror, okay? The mirror pops up. What happens next? You see the shutter before it even goes down, before the shutter curtain goes down and exposes the light to the image sensor. Then once that curtain, the first part of that curtain goes down, you then see the green image sensor. This is the moment where light is coming through the lens and actually exposing that digital image sensor or the digital film, okay? As, as soon as that second half of that shutter curtain comes down, that is when the exposure is done. No more light is hitting that image sensor anymore. The entire image capturing process is complete, okay? Then the mirror comes back down and the shutter resets back up into place and you're ready to compose your next image. All right, so that's what shutter speed is, why it matters, and how it actually works. In the next lesson, we're gonna be talking about how shutter speed directly relates to exposure, which really is the brightness of an image. I'm so excited, I will see you there.